sort of idea that there is an Ozarks and that it is associated with certain types of people who do certain types of things that are weirder than what we, the way we do them in the so-called mainstream parts of the United States. It's not really that, that old of a concept. I know you've had um, a book come out in the last, I guess it would have been about a year ago, yeah. um, up south yeah. in the Ozarks. Yeah. And and this is kind of, um, you, you had mentioned it before, talking about the south is where Southerners are. Uh, and and this is your, your latest book on the Ozarks and covering some concepts and ideas of what is the south and how do you define it within our region. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that book? Yeah, that's a uh, uh, up south and is a it's a collection of essays. So it's it's a little different than than most of my books, which are more traditional history books telling some kind of a story or you know a little bit of a narrative in there. It's uh, it, it's just a bunch of different essays that I had uh, written over like the last twenty years. Some about half of them had previously been published. About half of them were unpublished, but uh, they all have something to do with either the South or the Ozarks or with both in a lot of cases. And so uh, and uh, most of them are, are written for, uh, for what I would call a general audience. Uh, it's, you know, it's not a lot of heavy academic lifting and, and hopefully people who aren't uh, just really super into to history will enjoy some of this because – a lot of it's personal too. You know, I talk about uh, uh, there's an essay in there on migrant workers from the Ozarks in the in the mid 20th century, and uh, both my mom and my dad's family did that stuff. You know, went out and picked apples and worked in the hops and and uh, picked cotton and all that kind of stuff that that migrant workers did. And that was a at one time that was a very common experience for for people from the Ozarks uh there's uh you know there's stuff in there on there's an essay on the on the Andy Griffith show and why not yeah you know why why not <laughs> uh, not from the Ozarks but you know that's the kind of southern part of it fireworks uh there's it it's just kind of a grab bag of stuff that has interested me over the years and uh that I'm able to explore you know some themes about about the Ozarks and, and the South in there, and uh, and 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 sometimes it turns into kind of looking at the at the Ozarks and the way it divides into the South and the non-South, right? Hmm. And a lot of that has to do with the state line between Arkansas and Missouri. Yeah, that's uh, kind of where is, I wanted to go because it's yeah. it is uh, it's something that I know. I wrestle with sometimes living in Northwest Arkansas and a lot of people say that it, you know, so Arkansas, we typically would say is in the South, but in Northwest Arkansas, it has a pretty Midwestern feel. And a lot of people who move there from the Midwest find it to be pretty familiar territory as far as culture and, and the way people speak. And so I I've wrestled with, how do I relate to the South and the Midwest? I kind of identify as a Southern Ozarker, but someone who would meet me might say, actually, you're not really that Southern. You might be an Ozarker, but you're not that Southern. And where where does that boundary meet? Is it is it the state line of if you ask someone in Arkansas, they're going to say I'm from the South. And if you ask someone in Missouri, they're going to say I'm from the Midwest or Talk to me about that relationship between these two big states of the Ozarks. Yeah, I wish it were that easy. And and <laughs> okay. And well, I would say that's the that's the starting point. That's the starting point uh, for those of you who who you know had a football coach for a history teacher in high school. Uh, there was this thing called the Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> and we and we not not to 
and sold all the food. <laughs> no, my, my dad actually, was that was our history experience. <laughs> our history <Yeah. laughs> my dad was a basketball coach who who occasionally taught history, and I used to grade his papers when I was a kid. So I, I know how this stuff works. <laughs> this he is would, why you got into your job. Yeah, yeah, he would he would tell you the same thing. But uh, of course, Arkansas was in the Confederacy. Missouri was in the Missouri. Actually, has a had a star on the Confederate flag, but not to confuse everybody. Uh, really badly, but, uh, but we generally consider Missouri a union state. Mm-hmm. It, it mostly stayed in the union. And so that state line between Arkansas and Missouri becomes the line between the Confederacy and the union in the civil war. And that's a, that's a huge historical marker right there. And, and a lot of people are going to identify based on that state line that separates the, the states that goes right through the heart of the Ozarks. But even that, and I talk about that in, in one of the essays in there, um, in northwest Arkansas, you're closer to southwest Missouri, and most of the people from Missouri you interact with are probably going to be from southwest Missouri. And that was southwest Missouri was a stronger union place than southeastern Missouri was. You can go over into into the southeastern Missouri Ozarks, and you'll find plenty of people who would identify as Southern. And most of, that's another question. In addition to my "Am I in the Ozarks?" and "How do I get there?" question, I, over the years I've asked a lot of people in Missouri if they consider themselves Southern. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, the people that I've met in Southwest Missouri will say no, unless. You know, unless their dad was from Arkansas or something like that, and mm-hmm. you know, there's some kind of immediate connection. Uh, most of them in Southwest Missouri say no, but the Missourians that I've met who who identified as Southern almost always were from the southeastern part of Missouri. Now, I'm not talking about the Boot Heel, I'm not talking about the you know the flatland out there. I'm talking right. about the southeastern Missouri Ozarks. Okay, and and a lot of that had to do with politics. A lot of it had to do with who controlled the territories at the end of the Civil War. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, ex-Confederates controlled southeastern Missouri, ex-Union people controlled southwest Missouri. Uh, southwest Missouri became uh, staunchly Republican and therefore northern. That was the northern party of, of Lincoln. Southeastern Missouri, staunchly Democrat, the, the party that was most affiliated with the South in those days. And that kind of came with its built-in, you know, identity to a certain degree. So, so yeah, for, uh, I would say the, the starting point is the state line does, does tend to separate Southerners from Midwesterners. But like with anything, when humans are involved, it's, it, it ultimately is not that easy. And there's a lot of historical precedents for why people... Uh, claim southernness or 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 why they don't mm. and uh and so that's uh yeah that that's one of the things that uh still interests me today and i've i've th- that's the oldest essay in that book it's the very first one and uh and i first wrote that thing in 1998 no way yeah and i and i sort of pulled it it was published in the early 2000s uh for this book i pulled it out and sort of updated it and threw in uh, when I first wrote it, it was just it was uh, really just about Arkansas, and I was considering how southern is the Arkansas Ozarks, and that's a whole other. I mean, that's you know you get into uh, some interesting questions there. I would say for the most part, the farther west and the farther north you go, the less southern mm-hmm. people in Arkansas are. Right, and I I just happened to grow up in probably the most southern part of the Ozarks, culturally speaking. Yeah. In the southeastern part of the Arkansas Ozarks, where my grandparents grew cotton and where almost everybody was a yellow dog Democrat up until the 20th century. Uh, when I registered to vote, you know, I was, they didn't even ask you what yeah. party you were, you, you were just <laughs> registered as a Democrat because if, if you wanted to vote, <clears throat> In the election and have it count, uh, you had to vote in the Democratic primary. They would just say, you're signing up to vote, yeah, not yeah. to pick who you want to vote for. <laughs> right. You, you see, I mean, it's just understood. And almost the entire state of Arkansas used to be that way yeah. you know, in the 20th century. 
And uh, if, if they're, the parts that weren't were always in northwest Arkansas. Mm-hmm. You had counties like Newton and Madison and Searcy mm-hmm. and some of these counties where, where you actually had a two-party system, which was such a weird thing for, for people in Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, it was then, and it's, it's uh, still kind of weird now. It's, like it's, it's only the, with it. Yeah, the, the parties have just flopped. Right. Now. They, they flip-flop. <laughs> we, we still don't have much of a two-party system, but we have different parties. Uh, I've got place. a personal anecdote and then a long form question. Cause whenever I sit here and synthesize information for a long time, I always end up spitting out a way too long of a question. So bear with me. This but is where Kyle like really digests it and he's going to regurgitate it. And you're gonna be like, yes, that's what well, I don't set saying. me up too big, but <laughs> personal story. Uh, my, I remember growing up, my mom used to get made fun of by other family members being called the one Yankee daughter. Cause she was born in Missouri and everybody else was born in Arkansas. And uh, that was the line that they were drawing. It was like, doesn't matter that like, right. th- like I think my my grandfather was like in dental school or something. Like he'd moved there for a little bit. Yeah. And she was born there. It's like, nah, you're a Yankee. You're like, a Yankee. You, don't, you don't count. <laughs> you're not one of us. And it was just, I was thinking through those lines of, they had drawn the line as Missouri. That like doesn't count as the South. Um, right. Which is interesting. I didn't know that's where that was really coming from. I guess later on I thought about it. But as you were talking about, so here's the long question. As you were talking about the Ozarks in Oklahoma, I was thinking about all of the different state identities that that you kind of take on, even as history in America at least progresses westward. And you have like the first colonies and first explorations. You have strong East Coast cities and, and established communities and all of that. And then you have like the Appalachian region that's really figuring out who they are. And then I guess it's kind of the Ozarks and then, but they kind of get looked over because then it's like the Plains and the West, like the Plains and Texas and the Great West all the way to the Rockies with the Gold Rush and then on to California. So it seems like, at least growing up, you heard a lot about the East and the early settlements, the West and how it was one, all of that stuff, Gold Rush, and then like California. And it seems like our middle very middle part of the country and very kind of middle part of, I guess, northern part of our state and southern Missouri didn't really get covered historically, which is ultimately, now that I've heard your story, what led you into saying, like, I want to deep dive into this. So here's the long question. That was just thinking through state identity because I think it's (laughs) still going. (laughs) Dr. Levins, he's coming around. Cut all this out, Dan, if you'd like. No, this is good stuff. Um, If you don't mind, can you you set up your best high-level kind of timeline of identity for the Ozarkers thinking through who got here first. You, you've already talked Germans and, and French and, and all of that, what the identity was then, where it got kind of in the civil war to where it was in the civil rights era to where it is now, including even the Southern influence and are we in the South and not and all of that kind of stuff. Because I think anybody who's grown up here and has lived here for a while carries all that stuff with them and they, they hear all the stories and, you know, they know where they come from is historically relevant and matters. And especially now as we were talking Northwest Arkansas money, like our area of the world mat- matters on the global scale more than I think anybody in the Ozarks would have ever, could have ever dreamed, right? And so from old Ozarkers to now, if you could just kind of timeline it out, how, what would be some high, like high markers for yeah. kind of cultural, cultural heritage of the Ozarks? Right. First of all, I would say that, and I'm going to go back, but I'm going to start by saying that really the what we throughout most of the 20th century saw as the identity of the Ozarks or what sort of the, the Ozarks in the nation's consciousness was a 20th century creation for the most part. Very late or 19th tourism. century. Yeah. And, okay. And, and, but there's... Uh, but I'll go back and say it's not it wasn't a it was wasn't a complete fabrication mm-hmm. or anything like that. Uh, if you if you go back before the Civil War into what I call the the old Ozarks in, in my first volume, the vast majority of of settlement that came in here mm-hmm. and that you know that that ultimately pushed the the Native Americans on into what's now Oklahoma and Kansas, uh, and most of the ones who were here at that time, the early 1800s, were uh, what I call immigrant immigrant Indians in the 
book, they were displaced from back east to start with. Mm. But the vast majority of those those white settlers who came in here were of a very similar type. They were mostly from the from the upper south, east of the Mississippi. They weren't necessarily from the Appalachian Mountains, but they were from the greater Appalachia area. They were from Tennessee and Kentucky. The 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 biggest glob of them was was from Tennessee. Tennessee just supplied a, a ton of people uh, to both southern Missouri and northern Arkansas and to the state of Arkansas in general because Americans tend to tended to migrate in kind of parallel straight east to west lines across the North American continent. Mm. And so you had uh, you had these people who came in who uh, were very very similar to Appalachian folks in terms of dialect and folk music and folk ways of, of all kinds and mm-hmm. re- religious preferences and agriculture and hunting. It, I mean, they were that's who they were, and they brought their they were able to transplant their lifestyles without much change because the Ozarks is in a lot of ways just kind of a shorter version of Appalachia. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, we're just, the peaks aren't as high, but everything else is pretty, pretty similar. Mm-hmm. And, and so you get that, that becomes the, the dominant, uh, you know, the, the dominant cultural, you know, group of, of the Ozarks by the middle of the 19th century. And even though you have other groups who come in after the Civil War, and and you know you have, uh, you still have immigrants who are coming in. You have Midwesterners who who come into the region, especially after the railroad opens it up and it's easier to get here. Uh, that's still by the the late nineteenth century. That's that the uh, the term is not in wide use yet, but the sort of hillbilly you know, persona, you know that that is the the main mm-hmm. kind of cultural character of the Ozarks. And what happens is in the the very end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s, when you start to have local color writers writing stories about the Ozarks, and the most famous one is The Shepherd of the Hills, the novel that comes out in 1907, they sort of cement that that image for the nation at large. I mean, that's what people are reading about the Ozarks and you start to have travel writers who come in and that's what they want to highlight. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nobody's even today, you know, nobody comes to uh, the Ozarks or goes to anywhere else to write stories about accountants or, (laughs) or college professors or, you know, or, you know, uh, trash truck drivers and stuff. I mean, you you want to if if you're a writer and you're wanting to get readers you've got to exoticize mm-hmm. to a certain degree you've yeah got, you want the sensational yeah captivating yeah, not the average stories yeah mm-hmm. yeah you're you're not going to go for uh, the the average uh, for sure and so uh, that's what uh, in the in the early early 20th century you you have you know you start to have a written record whether it's fictional or non-fictional about the Ozarks, it's going out across the country uh, to people and that they're they're reading about. And uh, this is really what establishes that that Ozarks identity in the national consciousness. What what people the shorthand when you say Ozarks, what do people think about? Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's when that really catches on. It's roughly a hundred years ago. It's when that that really digs in. And uh, it's it it uh, as I talk about in uh, I think it's in volume three where I talk about this. It's really kind of that era between the world wars when mm. that image of the Ozarks reaches maturity and people understand nationwide, you know what the Ozarks is about, and it's about that the most colorful uh, fragment of the population that we had to offer. Right, and that's you know that kind of hillbilly caricature, and Appalachia is the same way, you know they they just they established that image probably a little earlier than we do, right? Because they're farther back east and they're closer to New York and Philadelphia and the places where they're doing all this stuff, and so, so I would say the you know the the image of the Ozarks is not really all that old that 
that sort of idea that there is an Ozarks and that it is associated with certain types of people who do certain types of things that are weirder and different than what we, the mm-hmm. way we do them in the so-called mainstream parts of the United States. Uh, it's not really that, that old of a, of a concept. And I would say in the, in the 19th century, the people who were living here would never have thought of themselves as being people from the Ozarks. I mean, they, they were, were just homesteading and frontier <laughs> lifing. Sure. The West. They, yes. they were, they what were, we they were Southerners or uh-huh. they were Westerners or okay. they were Arkies or, yeah. you know, people in Missouri. And that's fascinating. I didn't uh, realize but, it was that young of an, of an idea. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I really don't think, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, regional identity is something that just wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, it just wasn't in the, in the water uh, mm-hmm. back in those days. And, and it's something that is, is generally created by people from the outside looking at us and looking for those differences and those, those unique things to write about and highlight. And for the most part, that's what the, the regionalist local color era was about. And, and it dominated popular literature for at least the last couple of decades of the 19th century and for the first decade or so of the 20th century. And we, that's really when a lot of these, these ideas of, of regional culture and regional image, that's when a lot of these take hold, Hmm. you know, and, uh, and, and so we're, we're maybe no longer just Southerners or just Westerners or just whatever it was that, we thought we were. There's a little something else that we can add to that, and uh, and it's usually people adding it for us to start with. But right. then a lot of the folks uh, co-opt the image themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a lot of people don't mind being called a hillbilly if we're the ones calling ourselves hillbillies. <laughs> they just, we just don't want other folks right. calling us that. Right. And and so you know that. Uh, and now, roughly a hundred years later, I I don't know what the you know what the next phase mm-hmm. of this identity is. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure that the uh, that the hillbilly age is over. I, I really think it is, and I think it snuck up on me. Uh, I because when I started this, when I started doing this more than thirty years ago, I think we were still squarely within that you know, the, the hillbilly age. Uh, but you go to Branson today and just try to find a corn cob pipe or, you know, a, or a felt hat at a, at a gift shop. You know, hmm. that's just not, you stop at one of those up in Missouri, they have this chain of, of interstate gift shops called Ozark land. There's one up, on the outskirts of St. Louis, I stopped in it uh, back in the fall doing research, of course. <laughs> <laughs> some fun research. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I was just trying to find some sort of hillbilly doodad or, or something, you know, a corncob pipe or a, you know, a overalls. Yeah, just nothing. Really? Entire, and, it's, and the store is called Ozark Land. Mm, that's surprising. And, and 20 years ago, that place would have been full. I mean, you know, any sort of crazy you know, Chinese made little doodad you could think of from salt shakers to, you know, to, to uh, ashtrays mm-hmm. uh, with hillbilly images on it. You could, you could have found that, but uh, you know, that, that has, has gone away and there's, uh, there, there's a lot of, you know, I think there's a lot of cultural baggage behind why that has happened in the, uh, in the 21st century when it's happened. But, uh, but it's it's definitely happened. Yeah, yeah. So you would say those of those of us who are kind of proud of the hillbilly heritage and still somewhat claim that you know if if you were to look at me you would you wouldn't say oh that's a hill I don't wear overalls right I don't chew straw or have a corn cob pipe or whatever. But I still kind of identify with like some of the things that I love and some of the things that I do and the ways that I spend my time in the way that I hunt and fish, I float, I spend my time in the outdoors. Um, that would be kind of holding on to a past that is no longer reality. And it's almost like a, 
an old grab of not wanting to let go this nostalgic image that maybe once was. Yeah, I, I guess it's it's holding on to certain elements of of that image, and and certainly I, you're you're going to find people out in the the rural Ozarks who still do all that stuff, sure. who still hunt and trap and and fish and all that, but. Uh, but what's uh, and and you guys know this as uh, probably better than I do. Uh, the the old timers that I grew up with, uh, my grandpa's generation. He was born in nineteen fourteen, and uh, he was he was not really uh, that much of a hunter or a fisherman. Uh, you know, by the time he came along, we'd pretty much killed everything off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was he was probably about the age I am now before he ever killed a deer and probably only killed a handful his entire life. Yeah, there weren't many around then. You know, hunting for him was was squirrel hunting or or using rabbit gums. Mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, I mean, that's just about all there was around that. So, uh, so uh, you know, the the hill folk of his generation you know, weren't, uh, weren't modern sportsmen. I mean, they were just people trying to get by. Right. And, and if you had to use a little dynamite to fish with, then <laughs> you, you do it. You, to get by. Then, yeah. you, then you, you do it. And so, I mean, we've, we've sort of, uh, sanitized some of that and, and we, you know, kind of selectively pick and choose the, the parts that we want to keep alive. Nobody wants to keep alive the poverty. Right. And migrant labor mm -hmm. and uh and you know the outdoor uh, outdoor toilets if you've got one and and that kind of stuff rickets and, and tuberculosis yeah all you know there's there's, there's the a bad side of a there's lot a lot of, of yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that i would suggest people uh, you know <laughs> look into if you're really wanting to be an authentic hillbilly yeah they pretty well like to do without all of that stuff right and and so yeah, we, I mean, you know, we we all do that. We we, I mean, I you know, and I think it's perfectly okay to to be, to have pride in in the people who went before you and and the the hardships that they that they endured, and um, and it could, because I do, it, but because I because I know about the hardships and and the reason that we often had the image we had, uh, which was generally an image rooted in poverty. It was usually the poorest of us who gave the, the region the image that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm always thankful for what I've got and what I don't have to do, right. what I don't have to, to endure. Uh, so that's part of, you know, the pride I have because, you know, people set me up pretty well you know, I, I I didn't have didn't have a lot of the struggles mm -hmm. that that my ancestors had. The people who were who really would have, you know, everybody would have recognized as a as a hillbilly, uh, because that's you know even even if they would have fought you, you know, if if you, if you called them that, uh, you know, we've we've got it's we've got it pretty good, and and I uh, and that that old you know, image has, uh, has sort of died out, even though I think you're right. I think, I think there are still a lot of people, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks who, who kind of hold on to that, to that term as a, as a badge of honor today, right. if for no other reason to be a nonconformist and to, uh, you know, to not just sort of get in the line with the yuppies or whatever you call them. right yeah. <laughs> people like that. I don't <laughs> know. I, I don't know what you know what what you do today. You know, it's it's like the the squirrel cook off. Yeah, I mean that that to me is kind of a that's emblematic of that. It's sort of mm -hmm. well, you know we we've got a we've got a heritage a culture here that d doesn't necessarily fit with what some people are trying to squeeze us into. So let's just remind people mm -hmm. where where we came from. Right. And and that's and 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 that's okay uh, to uh, to do that. I uh, but I you know I wouldn't want to have to know that I've got to survive off a of squirrel only. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. That, you know. Well, it's I mean, it's kind of taking the <laughs> the best part of 
any of your own family story and, and culture and, and, and history and all of it and letting that be what you carry on. And as societies evolve, you don't, if you don't have to carry on the negative stuff, you shouldn't like that. It makes sense that, that we'd want to do that and say, yeah, well, this part of our heritage we're proud of, we're going to take on, but yeah, I'm, I don't want to bring along the tuberculosis or the racism or the whatever into, yeah. <laughs> into our modern Ozarks. So right. Let's, let's, you know, leave that in history, but yeah. Uh, I know Kyle has some more questions. Thank you for humoring me in that timeline. I'd say if you want to hear more of that, read the Ozarks. Which one? What's this? This is volume three, but volume it's three. The history, a history of the Ozarks, uh, and it's a three volume series. Yeah, so read the history of the Ozarks, yeah. volume yeah. one, two, and three, if you'd like. And then yeah. you know one of his several other nine or ten yeah. books that he has <laughs> on of, the top. Are we the South or not? And <laughs> what defines it? And all. And, yeah. Thank you. That was immensely helpful, and I. I'm I'm also getting through those books and and learning a lot, but I was just wanting a condensed timeline of just, just some I don't know just the identity. What do we What do we carry along with us? So it's a good question. I applaud it, and I I love how you always go through your your synthesis just, of everything. Just how I think, man. It's just what happens. <laughs> I, something that you've actually said in in a, one of your classes on on YouTube is it's interesting that because the Ozarks as a region is kind of a is a newer concept. The history of the Ozarks is really the history of a place that we now call the Ozarks. It's not actually Ozarks history. It's all of these people and events that happened in this place. And then we've kind of come back uh, retrospectively and said, yeah, that's, that's us. That's the Ozarks. And this is what we're claiming. Yeah. And I think that's a good way to say it. Cause it's like, <laughs> What do you do with that when you now are calling this place something that it's never been called before and right. people didn't identify with it or, or has only ever. been called for a hundred years or so when it's when people have been here a lot longer than that right, right. Yeah. yeah yeah you 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 exposed me for what for what I've been doing all this time I mean yeah that's a that you you put it a lot better than uh, than I can put it I mean we're we are we're sort of uh, uh, naming things in in retrospect and and uh, and and making usable history out of something that maybe you know that didn't seem to be at, at the time. Yeah. But that you know that's that's what historians do a lot. Is we kind of have to. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to understand mean, the place, sure. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just you're looking at just all these atoms colliding with each other out there, and none of it makes any sense at all. And uh, but yeah, I, I think that's I think that's right, and it's one reason in uh, it's one reason that I that I subtitled the last volume, the Ozarkers, because I th I think it's the, the last volume of the of the trilogy is the only one that's really about the cultural Ozarks. I mean, that's you know the first two, uh, the first one is pre Civil War, the the next one's the Civil War era, mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah, that, I mean, they're not really about a, a cultural place right. that anybody thought of as as the Ozarks in those days. There, I'm I'm writing a history of, of of people who lived in this physical place that would eventually become <laughs> yeah. known, just like you said, just yeah. like uh, that would eventually become the Ozarks. I, I I needed you to write some of the jacket copy <laughs> of that. And, Here we go. And uh, yeah, well, so I. Uh, yeah, I think that's ex exactly what what we're looking at. Here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a fascinating topic. There's so much more that we could explore with you, and um, and I'm sure at some point we'll we'll have to have you back on the show. Would love to come out to your part of the Ozarks and see Izzard County, and because I've never really spent a whole lot of time over there, um, but to get to kind of see that part of the world would be cool too. But that's for a later date. We really appreciate you. Uh, making the drive over here and spending some time with us and helping us get to know the history of the Ozarks a little bit better, kind of get to know who we are identity wise of where we come from and, and the place and the people. And, you know, when we're talking about the Ozarks on the Ozark podcast to have a, an idea of what that means and how the boundaries kind of flex and all that stuff is, is helpful for us and anyone listening. So we, again, we just really appreciate your time. Well, I've enjoyed it. And thanks for having me.